November muskies on the Detroit River and fish and rocker Brian Schramm is in the house. You're never going to believe who we have coming in as a special guest and you're not going to believe how we fare on this awesome fishery for monster Detroit River muskies. So strap in, hold on tight, and we're going to show you a down home Detroit next bite. I'm just looking for the next bite. I'm just looking for the next bite. I'm just looking for the next bite. I'm just looking for some fish with teeth. With Keith Cavallas, Gary Parsons, and Pete Mena live to fish, but certain fish really throw these guys over the edge. Walleye, musky, northern pike, fish with teeth. Countless days spent on the water have turned these guys into fishing machines with an eagerness to teach people how to catch more fish. So if you are ready to become a better fisherman, join Keith, Pete, and Gary on their quest for the next bite. I'm just looking for the next bite. When it rains, it pours, and while taken literally, it can make things a bit more miserable. In the end, is a metaphor for figuring out and catching not only several. Dude, that is so <laughs> incredibly awesome! But also some of the biggest muskies our crew have ever captured on camera. It is quite the opposite. That just happened? Are you kidding me? Lake St. Clair is a fairly large basin, also featuring the option for some stellar fishing at the mouth of the Detroit River. However, hitting the water on the back end of this front isn't going to make triggering fish easy. But no matter the circumstances surrounding the grind, Pete's approach to patterning strikes a key balance between time of year and methodically covering water. Well, kind of interesting timing. After much, much driving, I've arrived here on the Detroit River with Mr. Shram and arrived just in time for the raindrops to start falling. As usual, right after I get somewhere, a lot of things going through my mind, though. One of them being, did the fish really get going right before this uh, weather came in? Nothing I can do about that, though. Right now, because it's been abnormally warm, we're trying a shallow pass. I think mainly what we're thinking of doing this time of the year in the late fall period is working pretty deep in vertical presentations. I'm actually trying vertical jigging here, but because it's been so warm, this, this rain actually feels warm for this time of the year. We're taking a shallow pass first. If that doesn't work, we'll just kind of step it out a notch see if we can figure out what the fish are into and where they're at. One of the presentations, in addition to jigging for late fall muskies, that Pete uses often is live bait, and his compulsive attentiveness to both his rig setup and his hook points usually deliver, even on the sneakiest of bites. That's pretty funny. Dude. You didn't even set hook on him, did you? No, I, I've never seen such a tentative hit on a, a live bait. I, I look back and the rod's just barely bent. Is that a tiger? You know what, it is a tiger, that's a hybrid, yeah. Pretty fishy, it's kind of interesting, you know, because these are natural hybrids, they don't stock them here. Right, so. yep. But yeah, <laughs> you got nice choppers. I've never seen a hit quite like that. I think he was trying to sneak away with it. <laughs> Just kind of quietly slither off without us even knowing. Yeah, I'm out of here. A solo strike on live bait, and now post-frontal conditions has Pete's wheels turning as he and Brian venture back out toward the main lake for a second day of fishing on Lake St. Clair. We are heading out on the Detroit River here, and you can see this is a little different background than I'm probably used to on a musky trip. This is actually one of the best musky fisheries on earth right here. We are going to go out and actually mainly start out trying some vertical presentations out here and hopefully we'll find fish relating to the bottom out here in the Malted River. <laughs> it's a unique experience, Shram. You know, vertical presentations are really popular for walleyes and some other species, but not really so much for musky and northern pike. They can be extremely effective though, and very simply to me, where it's most effective is when you know you've got bottom relating fish. You know that they're hugging that bottom. Then take it another step further and you've got them hugging that bottom on a very sharp breaking, a regular type break. Lots of ins and outs. Those are the kinds of places that you really can't get to down on the bottom very effectively by either casting or trolling. Understand when you're trolling along an edge like that that's very sharp, you might be able to hit those points, but you aren't gonna be able to get lures into those inside turns. So that's where these vertical presentations are really key. 
What you're doing is you're working these brakes, keeping your presentations right near the bottom, maintaining contact, adjusting back and forth, and you're able to get into every little nook and cranny. There's a lot of different baits that you can use, including some specialty type lures like this Fuzzy Does It here, which is essentially just a big flat piece of metal with a heavy weight that causes it to flutter a lot on both the pull up and the drop down. And then just weighted soft plastics are some of the popular things. But the key here again is actually using a combination of boat control and these lures vertically to get in places to bottom relating fish that you just aren't going to get to otherwise. The next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Electronics are extremely important in fishing any time of the year, but especially this time of the year for muskies where we're actually fishing quite a bit deeper and we're fishing the real sharp break. There's several things that I want to look for, and one is food. I always talk about food. You know, finding muskies is one thing, but you want to find them when they're hungry. It doesn't do you any good to find them when they're in a bad mood. You want to be where the food is. I like this particular screen on my units because I can do a lot of things. I've actually got four-way split here where I've got side scan, I've got down scan, I've got the regular sonar, and I've also got the graph. So the first thing basically that I'm looking for is the actual food. So I'm looking for that on a combination of the down scan and, and the sonar. So I'm looking for bait fish stuff to eat. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm also looking off to the side with side scan. Now what we're doing here is we're working deep water sharp breaks and we're vertical jigging mainly right now. But what the side scan gives me is once in a while a fish crib or a big rock or something might show up that we want to cast to as well. So that's a good reason to have that on. And then the other thing that I'm doing here is I'm working back and forth on this break. I'm kind of crashing up shallow and I'm back and back off. So what we've also got with these units being connected together is I'm able to look at the back of the boat here depth wise for my sonar and my down scan. And with my unit behind me that I'm looking at when I'm running the trolling motor, I've got that reading off the bow. So we've got 21 feet of difference from front to back. And what that does is allow me to keep track of everything I'm doing and watch that depth both front and back very effectively fish these breaks. Pete Mayna and Brian Schramm have focused their attention at the mouth of the Detroit River off of Lake St. Clair. And although it's warmer and drier out, this calm weather isn't exactly flipping any switches either. But at least one muskie's surprising acrobatics are enough to inject some much needed life into their pattern. Good job, Shrammy. Ah! Nice one. <laughs> and help float their hope that this peculiar display could in fact be a good sign of things to come as the afternoon hours continue to slip by. Oh, he's got my rod. He's got my rod all tangled up. Nice job. <laughs> We're working this edge, taking a little bit deeper pass. And, uh, you know, Brian actually is up shallower. I was in about 28 feet. He was in about 24. And man, all of a sudden, talk about a strike. I mean, that thing just must have hammered it. The rod bent right over <laughs> and then straight up. You know, the weird thing is, this we, we got 40 degree water temperature here, and you just don't see fish come flying out of the water this time of year. That thing skied like he just hit a topwater bait. And while that was a spectacular jump, fearing a possible repeat of yesterday's solo performance has Pete and Brian getting more and more anxious. Well, they still don't seem to want to be chewing the hooks off our lures quite yet. We don't know what the answer is, but we're going to find out. The only good news about this is that you know, maybe right at dark, there'll be a little bit of a bite here. We got about another, uh, well, hour to go here. But no sooner than Brian's jig gets nailed a second time off the bow of the boat. Fish. Was that jigging? I didn't even see what yeah. you were doing. Yeah, I was jigging. As the sun starts setting over the Windsor skyline. <laughs> well, that's working quick, man. Right. <laughs> I was just telling the camera what we were doing. But they're not what we thought. They're fighting like crazy. <laughs> Pete's tireless efforts on the trolling motor to keep the live bait shoulder to shoulder with its brethren prey. We're gonna back up over the sucker. Get ready. Alright. Does exactly what he was intending by popping a bonus fish during what can only be described as an extremely tight feeding window. Something finally hit Ethel. Oh, I didn't feel on there now. No? No. Oh man, we should have cranked him right away. I don't well. No, Where he's still he? there. He's still there. He's still there, Pete. Okay. Can you tell which way he's moving? Yep, there he goes. Hit him that way. Got him, boy. <laughs> Whoa, what do we got going on here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
was a pleasant surprise as we're yeah. moving to another spot. Well, let's have a look at it here. I guess maybe I'll have to rig up another sucker. I was ready to give up on it. They do like suckers. They do like, you will eat a sucker here, won't you? That's something though, man. It, it seems like all the fish we've gotten have been right around the same size, right around the same class. Yeah, you know? they really have been, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, it's like it got cleaned in or something. It's actually a fairly long fish, kind of thin for this time of the year, but a weird mouth. But she felt that a sucker would be a pretty good deal. Yeah. He's ready. information from real fishing experts presented by amsoil one of the techniques that more and more walleye anglers are using is lead core trolling it's especially effective when you're fishing deep structure where you're trying to get a small bait like this flicker shad deeper than it can dive on its own lead core line is basically just lead filled line so it has weight in it we'll pull that bait down you connect that up to a leader which then connects to the bait and allows it to run the right way and you meter that by letting out a certain amount of lead core every 30 feet is a different color so if you wanted to you could let out your leader and then let out one or two or three colors of line until you got that bait down to as deep as you need it to go a good Good rule of thumb on how deep this will actually go is, is that lead core will pull a bait five feet down for every color of lead at two miles an hour. So once you've got that out there and you know you've got it in the right zone, you could count colors. Now there's a little bit of a problem with that. What if you only want to use two and a half colors, two and a third colors? What if some of your lead core breaks off as you're fishing and now you don't have full colors? This is the reason that most of us who now fish lead core a lot we'll use a line counter reel. That line counter reel, you can reset it as long as you've got that leader out there the same length on all of your rod, you just let out the same amount of line and they'll all be running equally as deep. When you're trolling along that structure, it's very common for you to want to spread out your lines as wide as possible, but you typically don't want to use boards with lead core. Lead core just sinks too much, you're fishing close to the bottom, a lot of snags. So what you'd rather do is have your rods do the spreading. There's a neat rod in our lineup of Bass Pro Walleye Angler rods called the 10 foot trolling rod. And the beauty of this 10 footer is is when you put it in a rod holder you've got a good wide spread 10 foot for this rod 10 foot for that rod 8 foot wide boat you're covering 28 feet of water as you go down that break but the nice thing is is this isn't just a wimpy long rod this is a rod with a lot of backbone still a fast tip for fighting that fish in but that backbone can hold all the way to that leg core the pull of the crankbait and hopefully the pull of a big walleye <laughs> All right, so we're back out on the Detroit River here. Got up pretty early this morning, wanted to get out here. There's supposed to be some nasty weather coming in today. And we picked up a new guy. We actually met Mark Zona at a gas station. He had a couple of spare hours in his schedule and he really wanted to try this musky vertical jigging thing. He's never done it. You ever fish largies back here? I'm not telling you. This spring? <laughs> Pete, I love the new boat. Yeah, oh you yeah, like you it? got lucky. You're like looking around, yeah. Right. It's very organized as always. <laughs> <laughs> you see the welcome mat up there? I do. That's it, yeah, I do. Because we've got an extra guy, what we're doing today is we, we're going to have two guys vertical. Even though that's mainly where we had our action before, we're going to stick with two vertical and we're going to try one casting to try and pattern these fish. So, SRAM is on the casting right now. He's checking out the shallow ranges. He's working at it and the Z train is gonna pull one in, man. I am the worst parent ever. I'm up here on St. Clair, just chicken away. I ain't been home in four months. <laughs> <laughs> well, things get off to a bit of a rocky start. Literally, when Pete is forced to abandon the trolling motor control to Brian while fighting a small muskie to the front of the boat. Tram, you're going the wrong way, man. All right, straight back, wherever you, just hit that right now. This is hectic. There we go. Okay, here we go. But all joking set aside, if that's even possible with these three. I'll be honest with you, I'm good friends with Pete. But for a minute there, it reminded me of when my brother and I used to go fishing and dad would yell at us. And, 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 and at one time, Pete was starting on wine. And instantly, I went into shutdown mode. I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until dad composes himself, I'm done. <laughs> But Brian is able to redeem himself by stepping up to bat in the first of a series of three muskies that truly prove what this Detroit fishery is capable of. I cannot hear anybody. When I seen Tram go, whap, 
and that rod went over, you know the difference of a fiddler muskie and what he hooked. Look at the size of that piece. I don't want him to hit me. Yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's at least 48. Yeah, I might that's be. That's probably more. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Look at that. That's a genuine slouch pig. There you go, girl. Give it up, yeah. dude. That was madness. <laughs> that was awesome. I cannot get enough of seeing something like I that. I know. Leading information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman. Presented by Mercury. I'm at the 2012 Tracker Dealer Meeting. We've got a special guest here. It's kind of neat to run into this guy. This is Robin Singer, the Mercury Professor. <laughs> Robin, we've got some new engines here. This one in particular, the new 154 stroke. And as long as I have you here, I'd like you to explain a little bit about what makes this engine so special. Well, thanks for having us, Gary. Actually, it is special. You think about uh, this engine, it's a, a four-cylinder inline, but it's all about displacement. This features a, a three-liter powerhead, 183 cubic inch. So if you think about our, our Pro 250 XS that puts out 250 horse, that's a three-liter engine. We're packing this three-liter at 150 horse. And that little package? Yeah. And you know, it's really important for this type of boat, for our type of fishing we do, you know, you need to torque to get that boat up on top. And besides the displacement, it gives you the throttle response no matter what RPM to get you out and get you on the fish. People think four strokes are heavy, but this engine comes in on a 20 inch shaft model like this one here, right around 455 pounds. It's the lightest in the industry. Oh, no kidding. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of close to the Optimax then, pretty isn't close. it? Within about 25 pounds, and believe me, you ran them, the performance is pretty close. But one thing we offer in exclusive is, this is the actual oil pump. Just like your car, we need to have an oil pan and an oil pump that's down in the midsection. But unique to the, the Mercury, we actually put like a little heat exchanger or a little radiator that cools the oil. So like on these cool mornings, we make sure the oil is the right temperature, warms up properly. Hot day, we make sure it's cool, again, to add to the life of the engine. Oh, I see. How about, you know, the one thing that with this economy, everyone's concerned about fuel economy. How does it stack up to, it, to other engines? It's actually, it's really unique because it features multi-port fuel injection. Mm -hmm. It's got a single swivel body that we actually use to, to bring the air into the combustion chamber, a long intake runner to make torque. We made it easy to maintain. Uh, the fuel efficiency is there. We have a no mess oil system where basically uh, it makes it simple whether your dealer does it or you do it. Uh, it'll even tell you on the smart craft gauge, hey, Gary, it's time to change the oil. There you go. Well, we have the Mercury Professor. We got the lowdown on Mercury's new hot engine. You know, you truly have to be passionate or just plain crazy to love muskies. An angler can spend days running these apex predators down only to have them snub your every effort, no matter how ingenious the pattern or presentation, but with the right amount of experience and enough real grease. Did you see that coming in with that? All is fun. Was that ca uh, casting, Pete? Yeah, real slow. Boy, you want to talk about a meat hit. You hope to witness a total 180, like Pete, Brian, and Mark have seen on this last half a day in the mouth of the Detroit River on Lake St. Clair. Going off with the mask. Oh yeah, that's a pretty nice fish oh, here. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Look at that. That one definitely has chompers. Where now Pete can't even get a word in edgewise. This fish, we've had most of our activity vertical jigging in the deeper range, 15 to 25. But I just decided to try some casting because I'm I'm actually on the shallow side here, and then the oh nice, Z, got one right nice, here, right here, good right set. All right, buddy. Nice <laughs> job. Z train. Oh God! Oh, oh, oh it's, it's a sea beast. It's, it's a damn good sea beast. Real big one, Z. Hold on, hold on. He's not hooked. He's not hooked. Good. He's not hooked. Good. He's not hooked. Good, Z. Sea beast. Sea beast. Sea beast. Sea beast. 53, dude. Oh, what just no. happened? That is a move. There goes my hero. Watch him as he goes. <laughs> dude. Whew. Look at that. Big old mouth just shaking left, right, left, and right. I was scared to death because I saw one hook. One hook in the top part of, of, uh, of her mouth. Oh. 
Oh, I mean, that's just a, you know, a typical thing that goes on this fall up here. Here's the one thing I will say. This is no joke. To see Brian catch that giant, I thought to myself, dude, that's, that's why we play this game. To see him back it up, then you start to become speechless. But for all three of the, uh, of the dorks in the boat <laughs> to land a Kong, are you kidding me? I'm serious. Did that really happen? <laughs> this is the boat of the Lost Boys. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Tramp. That just happened. That just happened. Yes! We all wear masks. Kim's the first girl in a girl. <laughs> hey, hey, Chief Jessica. Am I out of line to ask you for a hug real quick? Come over here. Yeah, you Get, over here. <laughs> Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Okay. Get over here. Where am I going from there? For lodging, live bait, or tackle for musky walleye bass and more, check out Angler's Point Marina, voted the best bait store on Lake St. Clair. For more information on Angler's Point Marina, check out anglerspointmarina.com.